programming is concerned. There are long-term disabilities, there are situational disabilities, there are temporary disabilities. It counts as a disability where a video game like Elden Ring is concerned if you have a kid. You have a two-year-old, you're trying to play Elden Ring, you can't pause. It is a situational disability that you have, where the game not having the option for you to be able to pause, for example, is a hindrance for your particular disability. I just watched a game developer say that playing a game while having a kid could be considered a disability. Having a kid can be a situational disability where accessibility is concerned. If you need to pause a game because your kid is running around your living room but you can't, you will have trouble playing games with no pause menu. Here's a bunch of info about it for anyone who's genuinely interested and not just trying to rage bait. LOL! How situational disabilities impact us all. Did you know a staggering 1 billion people worldwide have disabilities, including 53 million in the United States? They also comprise the largest minority group in the world. So providing accessibility for all people, including those with disabilities, should be a top priority for any organization. And according to the ADA, it is also a legal requirement, but fewer people are familiar with the definition of situation disabilities, even though we all experience them from time to time. Everyone faces situational disabilities. If you think you don't have disabilities, picture this. You're outside on a sunny day, which makes it hard to see your mobile phone. So you use one of your hands to shade the phone or turn up the contrast for a clearer view. According to conventional wisdom, you don't have a disability. Instead, most people just see the contrast button as smart technology. Or, put another way, it's the solution to a problem we occasionally all face. You couldn't see the screen, right? So what's the lesson? While you may have not had a permanent condition, you do have a disability at that moment. The contrast tool helps those with vision-related disabilities read and understand digital content, but it also helps everyone else do the same thing when necessary, especially in a situational environment like being outdoors on a bright sunny day. Or. It's a fucking inconvenience that is better solved with the advanced technology that we have in the here and now. Situational disabilities we can all relate to. Situational impairments are everywhere once you know how to spot them, as you'll see from the following examples. Each example includes an assistive tech solution designed for people with disabilities that also supports situational accessibility and makes the digital experience easier for us all. Scenario one, you accidentally break your arm on an ice skating adventure. That's not a situational disability. That's an injury that would be solved by the technological advancements of a hospital. Ice skating can be challenging. Even the pros fall, break arms, and wear unsightly casts, making it difficult or impossible to use their fingers until everything heals. If you want to use your computer, you'll quickly learn that a mouse and trackpad require fine motor skills you no longer have. While it's easy to say that you could use your other hand, Duh, that much harder than you think. Give it a shot right now. Okay, I'm currently using my right hand to move the cursor. I transition to my left hand and oh my God, it's still the same thing. I could do all these things that I would do any other time with my one hand, but that's the luxury of taking a bunch of computer classes to where you could use both hands to move a fucking mouse. Now, maybe this would be the part where someone bores you with the rest of the scenarios, I'm just going to skip to the good part and let you know at no point in this entire article is a child brought up with the exception of scenario number three, which has to do with an ear infection, where the first sentence is, ear infections aren't just for kids. There's no other example here that has to do with being a parent and how that is a disability of the situation. However, devil's complete advocate, this is just giving basic examples, and in case anyone didn't know, it's literally in Microsoft's inclusive design document as a situational disability example. And here we have all the examples from permanent, temporary, and situational. And when it comes to touch, you have one arm, an arm injury, and new parent. And what was was it that this woman said in the video as far as it is a concern to being a situational disability in regards to being a new parent? You may need to pause to stop your kid from putting a fork into a, a, a socket, a power outlet. That's a disability! 
Ah. This is exactly why I have a major issue with so many game developers right now. Having a child is not having a disability. That is a ridiculous and ridiculous to make wholeheartedly 100%. What a child is, is a responsibility. That's the difference. If you have a child, you are responsible for that child, which means if your child is walking around with a fucking fork in their hands, uh, you should be playing the fucking video game in the first place. What are you doing playing a video game if you have a toddler and they have a fork in their hands in the first place? I Wait till they go to bed. Like, it, like you are not sitting here telling people, oh, a disability is when you're, you have a kid. Ah, uh, yes. And maybe I just don't know how babies work, but fresh out the puss, I don't think a baby's gonna be walking around with a fork trying to electrocute the whole house. Just not something completely understandable to consider. But devil's advocate, one more time, maybe, just maybe, once the child is able to walk around and touch a bunch of things, maybe that could still be considered in that situational disability type thing. You know, you could just close the game, pause the game. Chat, I'm gonna shock you and Leon with something. If you're a PC gamer, which is she predominantly is talking about the PC players, which is very obvious by the way she's looking at this and discussing it. There's this thing called alt and tabbing or, um, you know, kind of like opening up the Steam page screen. That'll essentially pause the game. Shocking. Not really bother with continue playing the game because you got a literal demon walking around wreaking havoc all over your house because maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm senile. Maybe I'm the guy that just doesn't know the ins and outs of adulthood. But a fucking child, I would argue, if it's a new child, is way up here in terms of importance. Video game, way down here. And if you are looking at that as a disability, you're probably a shitty fucking parent. Thank you. It's the exact definition, but facts are woke, so you're wrong, probably Elena. Situational disability is characterized by a temporary restriction or difficulty in performing tasks or interacting with environment and objects. This type of disability is not tied to a person's physical or mental condition, but rather to circumstances they find themselves in. Definition, it refers to the experience of disability that arises solely from the situation rather than an inherent long-term physical, mental, or emotional impairment. Examples and scenarios include a loud environment making it difficult to hear, impairing communication, a well-lit room causing glare on a screen, impairing vision, or a temporary injury making it challenging to navigate spaces affecting mobility. Still not seeing anything that has to do with a child, but again, I am the devil's favorite advocate today, and maybe that's just an extra example that people aren't really using their third eye to think about. One problem though, if your focus is more so to a video game instead of your child, I would argue you might be not a completely bad parent because they got worse people out there, but I'm gonna look at you with a side eye because why are you prioritizing a video game more than making sure that your child is properly taken care of, well fed, diaper change, maybe resting for their infinite nappy? Why are we trying to make this a thing to where, oh my God, you are struggling and you have this innate disability or this situational disability because you decided to have coitus to make a baby and I guess in your eye, unfortunately, you gotta take care of it and that means a lot of things you won't be able to do as much as when you didn't have a child and let's tickle the balls on this for a second everyone because I could see that having a child is a responsibility and on occasion could be a nuisance because let's be honest you watching this right now parent at some point you've been annoyed at your child whether they're fresh out the puss or they're the 18 year old still living in your house and they don't have a job you have been annoyed by your child it's fine you can all admit to it but I would think if you're taking care of a child and, oh, I don't know, you're sitting there playing Spider-Man 2 or in this case, Elden Ring, and you don't want to be distracted by your child nagging that maybe they're hungry. Maybe they took a shit on themselves. Maybe they're scared about something and you roll your eyes. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you could pause the game or close the app and come back later because as an adult, you have the ability, if you have some free time on your hands, 
to play this damn game whenever you want. And you have the ability to always have fun because you're the adult. The child is the child. Once it becomes bedtime at like 8, 9, 10 o'clock, you're telling me you can't dedicate like 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the situation, maybe two hours of your nighttime playing a game and having fun? Are you that strapped? Are you that much of a miserable person? You can't manage time so that you can have fun while also managing the life of another human being you decided to bump and grind to help create? Because, oh dear lord, we must consider accessibility for everybody, especially the people who have to take care of a child. Oh, and by the way, this somehow ties into Elden Ring being too difficult because we don't have accessibility to make sure to accommodate for parents who are trying to take care of children. Newsflash, motherfuckers. Stop playing the game and take care of your kid. The game will not disappear. It will not self-delete itself. You can come back to that point at some point in time. It just won't be while you're changing your kid's diaper. And I see all these people getting all uppity about this and getting mad about this. Y'all worried about the wrong thing. This wasn't even the worst take in the fucking video. The worst take was this. But what if, so that we could actually allow disabled players to play these games, which is a thing I, I care about, you just, at the end of the game, you just get a screen with all your stats how many times you died, what options you did or did not have on. So people can still brag and still show off because again, that is clearly a thing people like doing with these games. I just feel like it would solve a lot of this conversation. We're talking about accessibility for disabled players. And for some reason, I always see this sort of like shield being thrown up every single time. We've seen it in the past with every other game journalist say, well, Elden Ring and Souls games should have an easy mode because that way people who are disabled can actually play the game. No, see, that's a horrible take to have, mostly because you are then using disabled people as a shield in order to, let's say, cover how bad you are at video games. Because again, that is clearly a thing people like doing with these games. Games, I just feel like it would solve a lot of this conversation. This is really not about asking Miyazaki from Soft to make the game easier or accessibility is concerned. It's about allowing more people to play it. And sometimes people just need different settings to be able to do that, more customization to be able to do that. Does it make sense? I feel like it makes sense. You mean to tell me that in order for disabled people, whether if they're actually disabled or they're in a situational disability, to have access to the game, you need to first beat the game and show me match stats as if that's going to help quell any discourse about the game. No. It's also a little bit annoying that this woman in the same video pulls up a website guide telling you that there are things in this DLC to make things easier for you. So she's still going to sit here and tell you to get good, but we should also consider your disabilities of having a child and you not having good time management somehow. People are gonna see that, see what you've done on what difficulty and how many times it took you to do something and say, fuck you, you suck. That's arguably gonna make it all worse. And she also brought up earlier in the video how everybody needs to get good. Yeah, you do need to get good. Not bitch about how you have to raise a child. Get good, manage your time. Make sure that you're putting forth the effort to have fun and also have responsibility of raising a child. How how am I saying all this and I'm 20 fucking four and I got no kid anywhere? Listen, I may have come off a little bit too strong in this video, but that's because a lot of the shit you've seen in this video has pissed me off. Not because it's any game developer's fault, not because it's PlayStation's fault, not because of any reason that you could possibly blame any large corporation. It's because people suck and they want to make excuses for their lack of ability to manage time and to actually be good at video games. And they want everybody to sing Kumbaya. The problem is that's never going to happen like that. You have a lot going on in terms of actual disabilities that people need to care about. And PlayStation, to my knowledge, has done a great job, I would believe, with having controllers for disabled individuals so that they can enjoy video games just like everybody else who's not disabled. And while we're focusing on that, somehow we're supposed to care that a parent has to dedicate time to their child. And when I say that out loud, it makes me want to kick myself in the nuts because why on God's green earth would I pay more attention to you instead of paying more attention to myself? or the disabled person that wants to join in for a game of Valorant and we all lose while playing ranked. Understand me 
perfectly. Woman and various other people who might agree with this sentiment. Get good, motherfuckers. Learn how to manage your fucking time. Or if you're in a situation where, oh my God, the screen is too bright. Turn it down. Oh my God, I have to walk to the store. Start moving your legs, motherfucker. Oh my God, there's no gas in my car. Get to the gas station or do what everybody else does. Go to the gas station, fill up an empty gallon of something, and then bring it back home to put in your car. Oh my God, I have a child and I can't play Elden Ring as much as I want. Manage your time. Go to work, go home, take care of your kid, and maybe if it's only for 20 minutes, maybe if it's 30 minutes, maybe if it's an hour, dedicate that to you time. Play the game, have fun, and then rinse and repeat for as long as you stay alive. Because guess what? A game company is not going to put in something for of all fucking reasons you have a child and you don't know how to manage your time and if you mad about that skill issue get good bitch subscribe to the channel i will see you gamers in the next one goodbye pc is not the master race